Yeah, so so our next speaker is Gautam. So who will be talking about a hazard journey to generate a Twitter bot with Matt Lockley. So over to you, Gautam, now. Great. Thank you, Gayan. And thank you to all of the volunteers for putting this conference on. Um, I caught a little bit of the last talk. It sounded absolutely fascinating and reminded me that I need to work on the documentation for this project. Um, but I'm, I'm happy to talk to you today about a haphazard journey I've taken to a generative art Twitter bot using matplotlib. Um, it's, it's, it's work that's been sort of two years in the making and, and still still somewhat a work in progress. But this animation that you see on the screen is an example of one of the pieces that the Twitter bot has created. So a little bit about myself. My name's Gautam Sisodia. Um, I live and work in New York City. I'm a six-year-old data scientist and a two and a half-year-old parent and the parent part is relevant, as um, you'll see in a couple of slides. I work for the state of New York, um, but all of the work that I'll show here um, was done purely in a um, personal capacity. An outline of um, talk. So I'll start with what it is I'm talking about, move on to um, why I created these things, and then a bit about how I did so, the the up and down journey um, to getting to where I am, um, some examples of the pieces that the bot has created, and uh, a bit about the, the code. OK, so first of all, what am I talking about? Um, a bit of some background terminology. Uh, so when, when I say tiling, I mean a collection of shapes, um, which I call tiles, that fit together with no gaps and no overlap. So this picture here is an example of that. Um, I'm going to be completely focused on um, the tilings that are made up of um, square and equilateral triangle tiles. And the ones that are symmetric, and by symmetric, I mean in the center, there's either going to be a single tile, a square, or a triangle, or six triangles together as a hexagon, which is here. And then all of the tiles around it um, are symmetric um, around that center tile. Um, so what is it that I've built here? So. Um, one is a is a Python library to make and draw these tilings. Here's an example of uh, the code to actually build one of these things. You specify a tiling sequence, and I'll talk more about what what that is. Um, and then there's a function for adding tilings, um, and it spits out things like animations of that tiling being built. And then a Twitter bot that posts an animation of, of such a tiling daily. Um, so here's an example from August 11th of this year. So that's what it is. Uh, on to why. So as I mentioned, I'm a two and a half year old parent. The first couple of years of childcare I found were often it was a mix of both being, trying to be very alert because I was always afraid that um, my kid was going to hurt himself somehow. Um, but then also somewhat being bored because he wasn't doing too much. He was sort of exploring the world around him, the toys and the books. But in practicality, that meant that he was sort of picking up a toy and throwing it against the wall and then picking up another toy, you're asking me to read the same book over and over and over and over again. Um, so in that strange mix of, of feelings, I became fascinated by this this toy that 
he has, which is a set of these plastic shapes that are magnetic on the edges. And so they, they fit together. And you can make all sorts of really interesting things with it. But I became fascinated by just how many different ways there were of putting, or actually it was like one way that I kept going back to, to, to putting these, these squares and these triangles together to, to make a tiling. And it wasn't obvious to me that there should be any way to put squares and triangles together uh, to make a tiling. Um, I I understood you can put well squares together and make a grid, and you can do a similar thing with triangles, just all triangles. But the fact that you can have like both of them together and 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 to and to fit together with no gaps and overlaps um, and, and to cover a large space, that was that was really fascinating to me. And it made me wonder just how many different ways are there to tile with squares and triangles. And around the same time, I, I stumbled across um, Twitter accounts slash bots that created this generative art. Um, this is one of my favorite accounts. This is not a bot. As far as I know, this seems like a, a real person. Uh, who, who creates these uh, these generative art pieces. And by generative art, I mean any sort of visual graphical thing that's created by code. OK, so some points about how. So my first attempt, so I have got this question. How, how many different ways are there of tiling with squares and triangles? My first attempt, you was uh, thinking about it. Okay, I'm going to try and code something up in Python. Do you try and answer this? Maybe come up with all the different ways of tiling with squares and triangles. My first attempt, I turned to Shapely, which is a Python library, open source for geometric manipulations. It's an incredible library. You can do things like define really complicated shapes. You can put shapes together and and union them to, to create new shapes. You can take the intersection of, of two shapes, so the, 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 the shape that's sort of the shared area. And you can do things like calculate area and, and calculate the edge of a shape. There's, there's quite a lot that you can do with this library. And it seems like something that should work here. Um, so given the tiling, it tells me what the edges are. I pick an edge, I add a new tile, so on and so forth. And that worked. Up to a point. So the left here on the left is an example of a of a tiling that I used creating this sort of heavily relying on Shapely. On the right is um well the, the green is sort of the interior of the shape as far as, as Shapely understands it to be, and, and the the black line is the edge of the of the of the full tiling as um, Shapely understands it to be, and, and you'll notice that, you may notice that the, these triangle tiles um, are actually, Shapely believes they're separated from the tiling, uh, which is indicated by this black line here. And, and this really throws off my algorithm because now it thinks that, hey, there's an edge here to the tiling, I can try and add a shape here. Well, it tries to add a shape, but now it overlaps with the shape that's already there. You can understand that this can this can throw off a, a naive algorithm like the one I wrote. Um, I, I don't know exactly why that's happening. I believe it's because when Shapely is making its calculations for where the edge is or when it adds a new tile to a tiling, um, it's making floating point uh, calculations, uh, which have slight errors that sort of add up as the as the tiling gets larger, and eventually lead to situations where it adds a tile, but not quite exactly um, where the shape is, and then that throws off my algorithm. I tried a few different things to. Um, try to address this. Nothing really worked, um, and became 
um, pretty frustrated and put this aside for months. But I kept thinking about it. A few months later, I had this idea. So maybe Shapely wasn't the right tool for the job here. So Shapely is generally used, uh, well, it's often used in the, in, for, for mapping. Um, it's used to define sort of more complicated shapes like the boundaries of countries um, and to do intersections and unions of those, you know, pretty complicated shapes. That's not really the situation I'm in here. That it's not complicated in that same kind of way. Uh, triangles um, can only be adjacent to, and by adjacent I mean um, two tiles that are um, that are attached that share an edge. A triangle can only be adjacent to three other tiles. A, a square tile can only be adjacent to four other tiles. And there's very specific ways in which they can be adjacent. So it got me thinking of an approach that was more, perhaps more discrete than, than shapely. So the idea is something like, um, think of each tile as a vertex in a graph and the adjacent tiles the two two vertices are are connected by an edge if they're adjacent. The animation on the left shows a picture of what that would look like. Um, each tile is a vertex, one of these purple dots, and then the pink line connects two tiles that are adjacent to each other. And so the 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 thinking is, well, if I can define what these discrete graphs, what all of those should could possibly be, then maybe I can take a graph and then from the graph actually draw the tiling. So then it became a matter of like understanding, well, what are all of the constraints on such a graph? So one would be if you've got a square tile, it can only connect to four other tiles, which is what this diagram here represents. Um, and just the way I know about what the vertices here, uh, the, the way I'm sort of uh, sort of calling them, there's a letter S or T, which means square or, or triangle, and then a number, which just indicates the, the, different, uh, the different tiles. So this is an okay situation. Similarly for a triangle con connected three other tiles, that's an okay situation. Um, this, however, is not okay. So here I've got one square that's connected to four other squares. That's fine. But those four other squares are connected to another tile, and that's not possible. So there's situations like this, which I just couldn't wrap my head around. Like, what is a nice, clean way to, um, to, to, to denote that there are these, these constraints um, on, the, on the graph? So... I couldn't think of think of ways to to do that, and got frustrated again. Put it aside. Thought that maybe I was a data scientist because I wasn't good enough at the math or the computer science. So I left it for for a few months, um, and then came back to it with another idea. So I thought maybe I could do some sort of combination of approaches, um, the discrete and the continuous. So um, the idea is that to define a tile, where what the tile is, how to exactly draw it, you only really need to know. I'm only using squares and triangles. So you need to know where the center is. You need to know what kind of tile it is, a square or a triangle. And you need to know where one of the uh, vertices is of, the, of the, uh, the, the points on the edge of the um, of the tile. And that's enough to define um, how to exactly draw that tile. And for two adjacent tiles, the centers of the tiles can only, it can, it can only be in sort of very specific configurations. If you know, if you have a square, then if it's adjacent to another square or another triangle, the centers are you know exact distances apart um, and the same with two triangles 
Um, and so given a square, you can sort of um, you can figure out where all of the possible centers are of all the possible adjacent tiles. Um, and for, given a tile or a tiling, all the possible adjacent tiles, I call those child tiles. So the approach is something like you start with a tile. Um, you know where its center is in the edges. It's what you use to define the tile. You can figure out all the possible child tiles um, by by knowing where, you know, calculating where all of the possible centers are for the adjacent tiles, and you pick a tile, you add it to the tiling, and you sort of continue in that approach. So I, I think of this as kind of like a hybrid approach between the continuous um, and the discrete. It's not purely discrete because it's not just thinking about the graph. I'm actually calculating like geometric things, like distances between centers. And But it's not a purely continuous thing because I'm only using the center and the edge, just those two points, and, and what type of tile it is to, to, to to draw the tile. And the animation is, is, is something like uh, uh, some you know, depiction of, of, of that approach. Um, and so here's an example, again, of, of uh, how the, uh, how sort of you can use this, this library to, to create the tilings. Uh, w one of the interesting things that happens here, though, is that there are configurations where you can't actually continue the tiling. So here's an example of that. So if you've got this configuration of four tiles here, these three squares and then a triangle and then a square, this area here, there's actually no way to, to fill that in with no gaps and overlaps with just squares and triangles. If we just take this part here, um, these, these, these four squares, um, to, fill, to fill this part in, you need a square. But to fill this part in with this triangle and two squares, you need two triangles. And so th there's, no way, there's no way to, to fill that in. So the algorithm gets stuck at, at something like this. Um, the algorithm is, is recursive. So um, if, if it does get stuck, it'll go back to a previous step and try and um, add a different tile to, to, to get past this block. Um, but um, in practice, that can actually take a long time. So what, what the algorithm does, and right now a slight modification, is that it actually looks forward a little bit. It makes sure that, OK, if there's a perspective tile that it wants to add to the sequence, for all of the edges of that tile, is there a potential uh, tile that will fit uh, in the tiling? So it does a bit of a, a, a look ahead. But it, this uh, situation here, you can actually extend sort of as, as arbitrarily long as you want. So if you just keep adding squares here and then one square um, down like that, that's also a configuration that will, that will be stuck. You can't fill that area in with just squares and, and, and triangles. So um, this is just one example of a, a situation which you can actually extend to be arbitrarily long. So some examples of, of um, the Twitter bot in action. This was the animation for August 9th. So the, the way the Twitter bot works is it uses this library to, to create an animation, post it to Twitter, and it does it once a day, uh, roughly. And this is a, an example of where it got stuck. So the animation is showing the, the, the tiling being built in sequence, sort of the algorithm in action. And you'll notice that here it gets stuck, and then it's, it's trying like different tiles to see what works. It, you can perhaps notice from this that it, it's actually going to take a little while to, uh, to figure it out. This is an example with the most squares. This was on July 16th. As I mentioned, you can actually tie with just squares and just triangles. Um, it's never so far done just squares or, or just triangles. This is the time where it got closest to most squares, and this is the time it got closest to the to the most triangles, uh, you know, to, to, to all triangles on May 20th of this year. Um, 
which got me interested. So I, I look for the most balanced one. So balanced in terms of a close to equal number of squares and triangles. What's interesting about this though, is that it actually looks visually that there's more squares, but I think that's because squares are actually larger in area than, than triangles are. So I wonder if I should actually look for more balanced in terms of area, not, not number of tiles. But this was on May 17th. It also got me wondering, so I, I was actually thinking about, well, what are sort of the most visually um, attractive um, uh, tilings? Um, because, or appealing, like, this is interesting, but it's not really like visually appealing um, to me. Uh, I couldn't, you know, really put my hands on like what it really means like in a practical sense or in a, in a very concrete sense, what it means to be um, visually appealing, but it got me thinking, well, maybe I can use the, um, the Twitter stats somehow, you know, if, take a look at which of the tweets were most favorited or um, retweeted, maybe that'll give a sense of what people think or is the most sort of visually attractive or, or appealing. So some stats. So when did it go viral? So from April 24th to August 26th of this year, there's been 141 tweets. There's been zero retweets and only one was favorited. And that was by a friend who was amused by the example where it was almost all squares. So has not gone viral yet. Maybe one of these days it will, but the, the easiest data science questions are the ones where there's no data at all. So uh, just a little bit about the code. So the way the code is set up is there's different levels of abstraction. At the lowest level is a point. I actually sort of define a point just from the very basics from the from the coord coordinates. There are, of course, many libraries, including Shapely, that define points um, that I could have used, but sometimes it's fun to define things um, from the ground up by yourself. So there's a couple of different kinds of points here. One, there's a Cartesian way of, of um, defining the point, x and y coordinates. Um, you can calculate the distance to some other point you can Convert it to polar, which is um, uh, useful when you're uh, doing things like uh, rotating a point around to find all of the um, all of the uh, all of the vertex points of a of a tile, um, and it has a shapely geom geometry point that uh, representation that that you can access. You can work with with shapely. The next level up is a tile, and you can define a tile based on the center and the vertex uh, points. Uh, as I mentioned, um, it you could, it's got a list of child tiles. This is the, um, for this example, this is the first child tile in the list. And it's got a polygon representation. So that's a ge uh, shapely geometry polygon. So you can use, you can work with, with, with shapely with these tiles. The next level up is a tiling. This is essentially just a, a sequence of, of tiles. And in this example, I take the, the tile example I had before, plus the first child tile of that and the first child tile of that um, as, as my list of, of tiles here. And then you can do things like plot it. And it's got functions that, that you try and figure out if you have some other tile is that in the tiling, um, is it compatible with the tiling? And so. It, is, are there no gaps and overlaps if you were to add it um, to the tiling, things like that. And then the highest level up is, is a sequence of tiles. And um, so, and, and you know, I've, I've shown you this example before um, of, of what the code looks like. And, and, and this is the tiling sequence. It also has the code for, um, for tweeting out the, um, the, the animation. A note on some of the libraries used. So all open source matplotlib um, used for, for plotting. And hopefully this gives you, a, your matplotlib is um, maybe the, the most standard library used for um, data visualization. Hopefully this gives you a sense of um, 
a, a way that you can use matplotlib that's sort of out of that that normal normal use case. Um, Shapely for um, uh, defining shapes, uh, as, as I mentioned, Descartes is a library for plotting Shapely objects um, in matplotlib. NumPy for the numerical calculations. TweetPy is the library I use for tweeting, which requires a Twitter API key. And Google Cloud Storage, a Python library um, for interacting with Google Cloud. I, I use Google Cloud just to store uh, the tweets and the metadata that the bots created. And that requires a Google Cloud key to, to use. Um, but all of these are open source uh, and he heavily relied upon. Uh, I, just a quick note about hardware requirements. So the daily pipeline takes about three minutes on uh, GitLab shared runners. Uh, and these are computers with um, 3.75 gigabytes of RAM. And the pipeline does a few things. It clones the repo, installs the package, makes a tiling, runs the algorithm for 70 steps or so, makes an animation, posts it, saves it to Google Cloud Storage. So it's doing quite a few things. Just to give you a sense of you know, how long it actually um, takes. And the generated animations are about um, two megabytes in size. So not particularly expensive. OK. Thank you. So yeah, I, I think you know, a take one of my takeaways here is that Python is a pretty incredible tool for just answering questions um, that just come from my curiosity. So the original question was, how many tiles are there? How many tilings are there? I haven't answered that question yet. Um, I know that there's a whole uh, uh, subject in math ar around tidings, which I, but I never bothered to pick up a textbook. I just thought it would be more fun to code it. Um, and uh, but but what the Twitter bot I think has shown is that there are many many more ways of tiling with squares and triangles than than I imagined. Um, so thank you again for the volunteers, and and thank you all for for listening to the talk. Uh, happy to take any questions. <laughs>